So, most of you have GCSE mocks coming up and may be worried due to some unforeseen circumstances. Now, I'm not here to be the messiah and save you with one magical piece of advice. However, in this video, I do want to give some tips and things that I will be doing for most of my subjects. Hey everyone, Adoka Vinterman here, and in this video, I'll be going over why you should revise for your GCSE mocks, some revision tips for various subjects, and how I have broken down my revision to get the best results possible. So let's start with an obvious question. Should you revise for your GCSE mocks? Yes, of course, especially now where it's more important than ever to do so. This could literally be your actual GCSE if they end up getting cancelled. Now I don't want to worry you because everything could end up going pretty smoothly this year, however I also don't want to give you false hope. Before I go into individual subjects, I want to tell you some revision methods you should not be doing. So to start off with, the worst methods are probably rereading and highlighting. Here is Dr. Barbara Oakley speaking about that in a TED talk. People's tendency is to highlight, right? There's something about the motion of the pen on the page that makes you think that it's actually going into your brain, but it often isn't. So the main reason these study techniques don't work well is because they are a form of passive learning. Another two not so great study methods are making notes and just reading through them again. And according to Professor Dunlovsky, who's this big psychology expert in revision and stuff, he says summarization involves paraphrasing the most important ideas within a text. It has shown some success at helping undergraduate students learn, although younger students who have difficulties writing high quality summaries may need extensive help to benefit from this strategy. So at this level, don't go out and bother making notes again, especially if you've already taken them in class. It's okay to take notes in class, don't go yelling at your teacher about me and Professor Donlovsky, but don't go home and waste your time rewriting notes thinking that you're being productive when in fact you're just copying the textbook and adding a really pretty title. Now let's move on to subject specific advice, which I've been quite hesitant to give as I've not done my GCSEs yet. However, my predicted grades are quite good and I feel like some of these tips can really benefit some people. Let's start off with triple science. I've grouped it all into one subject because my main revision method for these subjects are very similar. For biology, chemistry and physics, I already have most of my Anki flashcards made, which I run through every morning and will continue to make for the topics that I haven't throughout the half term. Apart from running through flashcards, I do lots of practice questions. By this, I mean going through past papers and topic past papers on physics and maths tutor, as well as doing the textbook practice questions on the CGP books and in the Caboodle textbooks. I also use Seneca, but this isn't my main form of revision. It's a good backup to have, as it lets you get a rough outline of the subject. Again, I don't waste time doing notes from the textbooks, I just get straight to the point testing myself and retrieving knowledge. Also, a quick disclaimer, don't make flashcards before you've learned the topic, it will not sink in, I made this mistake, don't do it. For maths, it's a similar thing to science, but even more basic. I listen in class, mostly, then come home and do practice questions. If that doesn't help, I'll go through a GCSE maths tutor video trying to understand the topic. Then I do more practice questions. And finally, to wrap it up in a nice little bow, I do exam papers in exam conditions, making sure to mark these and write down the subject I struggled with or get wrong throughout the paper, which I would then later watch a video on and do some more practice questions. I know this is kind of annoying, but with maths, practice makes perfect. There's just no shortcut to it. Previously, I used to actually go through the video, write down the questions, do the examples along with the person, but I found that sometimes this can be a bit annoying as I would have to write down the questions and maybe some questions are graphical, then I'd have to draw out the graph. It's just much more simpler to watch the video and maybe do a couple of practice questions along, but then straight away move on to doing your own practice questions. I usually get them off Math Genie, which I'll put in the description if you're interested in. Now, let's move on to English. Speaking of English, I want to thank the sponsor of this week's video, First Rate Tutors. So after saying my videos, I find it difficult to revise English language and literature, but with First Rate Tutors' amazing course on English language, literature, and the spoken word assessment, it's made it so much easier. The course includes 48 hours worth of content, and it comes with model answers for language paper one, two, and English literature paper one and two. The one thing I love about this course is that it goes into so much detail in most of the English literature texts, including Romeo and Juliet, Christmas Carol, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Animal Farm, Macbeth, and even Inspector Calls. But if you don't have time for all of that, you can just go to the Mind Map Intensive Revision to memorize quotes and the model answers you'll need to get the best grade. What's great about this is you can talk to the tutor directly. It's just like having a teacher on call. 
but they will actually respond. <laughs> so let's take a quick dive into the course. So as you can see, there's so much material on everything right here. For Macbeth alone, there's like six hours worth of content, including exam practice, going in depth into every single act. And if your school doesn't take Macbeth, there's most English literature papers on here anyway. But the main thing I love about this is English language. As you know, English language is quite hard to revive for, as is most of English. However, this is just made so easy in this course. As you can see, there's lots of practice on different modern answers. If your school is still unlucky and you're taking poetry, there's both power and conflict, as well as love and relationship. I can just click on one of the poems and then watch the in-depth video and the analysis all about the poem. It's just absolutely amazing. And this course is not like a subscription or anything. It's just a one-time payment. It's super easy to use. It's great and the tutor is amazing. So if you want 75% off this course, just use code ADOKA, that's U-D-O-K-A for 75% off the course. Check the link in the description. Let's get back to the video. So this is a subject I do not like very much, mainly because it's quite hard to revise for. However, I've been getting better. The main thing for English language is just doing practice questions, trying to mark them like an examiner, as well as using the tips and techniques your teachers have been giving you from year three onwards. For English literature, there are so many things you can do. For example, making character mind maps, making flashcards for quotes and key events, etc, etc. I also like using Seneca for English literature as it covers parts of the book well and gives good interpretations which you can use in the exams. Last but not least, I used a textbook from my school. At mine, they're like two pounds each for the four books we'll need for the four different topics we're covering in English literature as well as the English language textbook so it's not too expensive and they are very useful as I said English is not my strongest subject so take this advice with a grain of salt however a lot of these tips I've gotten from friends and other people who are doing very well in English language I don't take geography so I'll just talk about history personally I love the subject it's so interesting apart from Elizabeth I use Anki flashcards for this as well and Seneca, but two great things that have been working for me is making mind maps and doing practice questions. I'm not sure why our schools don't endorse answering those 8 to 16 mark questions more. It's really useful to go through the mark scheme and see how an examiner would critique it, trying to be as harsh as possible and knowing what to put to get full marks. Mind maps are good for making links, which is a key part of the subject. Also, a great thing to do is timelines. Timelines are good for testing knowledge of dates. However, dates I mainly do with Anki and and it's been working really well. Last but not least, we have religious studies. Our school gave out this workbook to every single student with, you guessed it, lots of practice questions, which I just tend to go through as well as make Anki cards on quotes and key events in a particular religion. There's not much else to say about RS apart from making mind maps, which can be really helpful. And again, just going through the long 12 mark practice questions and seeing what you can improve. Now, I just want to quickly show what is on my Google Calendar and how I've organized some of my revision. So it's pretty simple. I've just popped in the flashcards I want to do on certain days, as well as written some of the other stuff for other subject and color coordinated it quite well. I'll also use this in collaboration with Microsoft to do to be able to write my daily to do list. However, I've only given myself a rough idea and not set anything in stone, which is probably what you should do, because then if you miss something, it can just mess up your whole thing. I've put stuff that I definitely need to do on the days, but there's some other stuff that might come up, which I'll just put my to do's for that day. Organizing isn't the main thing. Don't get stressed if you don't have a plan. Just start revising, basically. Although I'll be revising during this difficult time, do not worry. I will be putting out some videos to help keep you guys motivated. If you did enjoy this week's video, make sure to check out this playlist for the study with me's to get some motivation to revise in the half term. Don't forget to subscribe and have a productive week.